If you are looking to create a knowledge base with Life Search for free, then this video is for you. With the assistance of a free WordPress plugin, you can easily design this grid archive one knowledge base and this single knowledge base page. We generate a table of contents by using Elementor templates like the ones you are watching. This is not a sponsored video. Instead, I'm only sharing with you all this fantastic free option you can utilize to make a knowledge base. What is a knowledge base? This is a web page where you provide detailed information about products or services in order to reduce support tickets and boost your production work. And this is the plugin I will be using. It, it uses ready templates for your knowledge base or documentation without the need to know any coding skills. The plugin also generates a responsive table of contents automatically to help your visitors to navigate through your content, improving as a result the user experience. Other great features include to restrict the access to your internal documentation based on specific user roles if you get the pro version. It's powerful integrated with Elementor Page Builder so you can create your own custom templates for your single and, and archive pages. I will show both in a second. As for the pricing for the pro version, they offer two different options for the agency bundle unlimited sites. They also protect your money with this 100% money back guarantee. And this means if you aren't fully satisfied, you have 40 days to cancel your order without any billing issue. The first step is to install and activate the plugin. So to do that, and from your WordPress dashboard, click on the Add New Plugin. Then run a quick search for Better Docs plugin. It's this one with more than 30,000 active installations with a five star rating. To install is very simple. Just click on the install button. And once it's done, click again on the same button to activate the plugin. I have already done so, and that's why I'm not doing the clicking. We get this new plugin entry in your WordPress dashboard. The first step is to quickly go through some of the general settings. You will find in general excellent and transparent details about the configuration. I recommend you enable the built-in documentation page option. If you disabled, if you disable, you can use instead shortcode or page builder widgets to design your doc page. So the default documentation page title is docs. The slug is in lower cases and these are the docs root details. I don't recommend you change any of these settings except for the last option to enable the FAQ schema under the layout section two simple steps to make. The first one is to make sure that the first option is activated, enable live search, and the other one is to change the button text to share it as my personal preference. Under the shortcodes section, we have access to shortcodes ready to be inserted wherever you need in case you need to customize the design layouts. One cool thing I like particularly is the ability to, in the advanced settings, to restrict the access based on user roles. In the free version, we are unable to do so. However, this is only available for all for pro users, but again, this is something you may consider for your business. We will be adding now the necessary categories to sort the topics out. So go to Better Docs Category tab. You need to fill out all of these fields by adding your name category, the slug, which is the URL user-friendly version of the name, it's usual in lowercase. If you want, you are allowed to add an icon image. Then you need to repeat the same process in order to make the other categories. One cool feature and you can do is to move the category positions by dragging and dropping. Let's drag this down. For example, 
and now the advanced. And now is the phase to add the articles, the content. You can add your docs, title with the images and videos if you need to. Don't forget to assign a category to each post. These are my categories inside the plugin dashboard. And to add your articles and posts, all we have to do is to click on the plus icon for this specific category. One thing to keep in mind if you use the top option is to assign your category. Let me showcase how this is. This is a simple post, a blog post with some HTML elements. And as you can see, I have assigned my category at your right hand side. Next up, we will make a custom archive page design by using Elementor Pro. So head over to templates tab, add a new one. The type of template is docs archive and give it a suitable name. Can easily insert any of these ready to use Elementor templates. I close it up since I want to start from scratch. As you can see at the top left side, Elementor is displaying the available widgets for this specific template. First, we start off by dragging a container and a heading widget. And this is my text. Center align. I press Ctrl Y to bring the, the structure with a 400 pixels height. And now justify the content to the middle. I search for the text editor. And let's align to the center. I drag in another container, a boxed one, and I drag in this doc search form. This is from the plugin. And you can customize as you may as you wish. So I remove the 50 padding and the margin. I was I want to assign a box shadow with the search icon to this color. This is my final version of the hero section after some editing work. It's beautiful and super clean. Now that we have finished designing the hero section with this beautiful and clean search form, we are ready to make the grid design underneath containing all articles and posts. We will be using for this the plugin widgets. So I drag and drop a single column elemental container Direction is set to vertical, and then I drag in the better docs category grid widgets. Under the content tab and layout options, you have two layouts to choose from the default one and the layout number two. I will use the default, and the, under the grid column is where you set up the number of grids. At the moment it is with three columns, but you can change to whatever number you want. You can modify the header, the title, the tag. I only want to change this button text to share it. As to me, there is no need to make more editing work. Under the style tab, is where you stylize and customize the items or the elements. I modified the border radius to 9 pixels, all sides, the title, the count, and the, the button. The title, I set mine to be black with a nice box shadow, and the count element, this green color. And here's my final version of the design. It's beautiful. Coming back to the content tab, the plugin has options to the queries. You set here the queries categories you want to include or and or exclude. For example, to include all you have to do is to click within the box and choose from this list. If you want to exclude, you just need to click and then choose the one, the category you want to exclude. Okay, once you are satisfied, click on the Elementor Publish button at the top right hand side. No need to add extra conditions, just click Save and Close. And this is the, the archive page design. And now, if I click on any of my items, 
It opens up the default single post layout from the plugin with, with the automatic generated table of contents. Let's design now the single docs template inside Elementor. On Elementor, tap, click on Head New. Inside here, you select the single duck and we give it you give it here a meaningful name create template and now let's insert one of these ready to use templates click to insert one of the coolest thing you can take is to make it sticky. To enable, select the dark sidebar, go to advanced tab, mouse effects. You have two options to make it top or bottom. I want to be top and here you can disable on tablet and mobile by clicking on the plus icon and enable this option to stay in the column. For the table of content widget, I'm, I've made the same. So I selected, select the widget, go to the advanced tab, motion effects, and sticky. Disable on table and mobile, and we are done. And now I do my editing work. I don't really think you need to watch this. This is my own preferences. I put the box width to 100%. I remove the box spacing in uppercase with a nice border, a solid one and a box shadow. And there you have it. I like it. As you scroll down, both sidebars stay sticky. And once you are satisfied, you click on publish. The condition is to display on docs and save and close. And now what you can do to assign to your to your docs page is create a new page. I call it knowledge base, publish twice, grab the short the element or short code, copy, click to edit, and paste here the short code. Update and voila. Okay. And this is the single Docs page. Super cool. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.